We will have many scholars here. I, I don't want to take all the time. We're running against time, so I'll be brief. Pan-Africanism, collectivism, dignity, and unity are all concepts that really run crosswire with Mayor Vincent C. Gray's single governing philosophy of one city. Pan-Africanism is alive and well in one of the greatest natural resources that Africa has given, and that's the people. I tell people that the stories I tell when they first started, they were told a long time ago. But you see, I cut that short, but I had your attention. Even though the drums were taken away from African Americans, Africans who were enslaved in America, we still respond to the beat of that drum. Emperor Haile Selassie was, in many ways, a metaphor for Africa in the minds of Americans. And the numerous books that were written about the exploitation of Africa, and the points about us as people, that, in some respects, we even hated ourselves. We denied ourselves the freedom to think that we were equal to anybody else. One of the things that I learned in history and from the book that you wrote and others have written is what Emperor Haile Selassie said. We can disagree about many things concerning what the Emperor did because I was among those on the left to criticize him. But we cannot disagree about the legacy he left. When uh, her father was here at that time, he was also a colleague of uh, uh, Dr. Bayan, Balaku Bayan, and also her father also was the teacher of uh, uh, President Nkrumah. My father was a gentle, gentle man and he was passionate about Africa, he was compassionate toward everyone, he was a family man, he not only took care of his own family but his sister's family when her husband died and he was also considered to be the, the, the father of African students here at Howard in the 40s and 50s and afterwards, however he did um, retire in 1959. But I want to end with uh, a quote by a brother named Brother Dyer. Brother Dyer has now already transitioned on, but he literally walked from London to Shashamani, which says, speaks volumes in terms of a people who is searching for a place to call home. And this is his quote when I interviewed him during my studies. Um, I'll read, quote, you see, it's I and I faith and courage keeping us here. Them say Ja dead, you know, and we have to make them know that Ja can't dead. If we leave, Ja dead, you know. If we stay, Ja lives. That's the courage and faith, end quote. When the Italians came in, there was quite a difficult time, especially for those coming from the diaspora, let alone for the Ethiopians at home. Many people were killed. The Italians were not good fighters in terms of they used mustard gas. They rounded up all the highly educated students and ex executed them. At that time, some of the members of the delegation returned. Both my grandfather and my grandmother made the vow that they will live and perish as Ethiopians because this is their motherland. The youth here have a lot of needs that are not being met. Okay, and those needs, when those needs are met and, and the adults align, because there are certain issues that youth are not going to be able to resolve. For instance, the attack from state in terms of education and policing. Come love and give new birth to man's destructive mind. Spread where confusion reigns on earth, goodwill to all mankind. 
Shine on eternal light, thy penetrating ray shall turn the hour of darkest night into eternal day. And I've been uh, very active in working with Ethiopians and the Ethiopian government over the years in different capacities. So I, it was my pleasure to research and write about Emperor Haile Selassie, who I met on a couple of occasions when I was living in Ethiopia, and who is one of the, the great celebrities of the 20th century. Pan-Africanism became the establishment of the African nation. We do know, looking at people's um, thesis, dissertations, and student accounts about how graduates from the African Studies Department are engaging a variety of interests in Africa. So we kind of have an idea, if we just look at the kind of studies of research with, uh, of what people are doing, um, you know, how um, Africa has been engaged. Yet many unknowns still persist. And so the question is, how do we bridge that gap? Cultural awareness is one of the biggest issues that we in the diaspora face on a daily basis. Ethiopianism is a subject that is much um, confused with because many people assume that Ethiopianism deals with Ethiopia and some other authors like Chirenje think that the subject starts with South Africa but as the first speaker said Ethiopianism like Pan-Africanism began with the Caribbean um, intellectuals it also included many African Americans and then eventually the focus of Ethiopianism became Africa. We, the black peoples of the world, in order to effect unity, solidarity, liberty, freedom, self-determination to secure justice and maintain the integrity of Ethiopia, which is our divine heritage, do hereby establish and ordain this constitution for the Ethiopian World Federation incorporated. At the time of independence you had the organization of African unity. You had now that has evolved into African Union and these organizations really were manifestations of what it is uh, to have an African agenda. However we see that while there is, and this is where my thinking comes, while there is the wish to do a lot of things and there's no place like Africa where there are so many protocols and documents about people's rights, human rights, economic rights, political rights. Books have been written about them. No other part of the world really undertakes that kind of exercise and no other part of the world is still the most oppressed. As you can all see, you look at any statistics around you and Africa always, Sub-Sahara Africa always ranks last. He riding, riding, you know how I don't drive. He riding, 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 all the way to town. When they get to town, Farmer Brown pull the truck over the side and he walk around back to let Doom Doom out. And he noticed Doom Doom still sitting in the back of the truck with that gray big basket of mangoes on top of his head. As Doom Doom get off the truck with a gray big basket of mangoes still on top of his head, Farmer Brown said, Doom Doom, why are you riding in the truck with that big basket of mangoes on your head? And Doom Doom, no, no. He said, Farmer Brown, you offer me to ride, not the mangoes. But, uh, for African Americans, they could be proud to know that uh, John Robinson and his crew, they um, taught and trained many Ethiopian pilots in the very beginning. Of the but after the revolution, the real migrations of Ethiopia started here. And as you see now, our community is almost, uh, I don't know, maybe over, over certainly about around, it's going to be soon a million. Uh, today, uh, we, Washington, uh, 
is a, uh, is a, almost our second home. <laughs> for us, it is our permanent home because I have been here now for 38 years. And for many, and we have children and grandchildren, and we, are, we have become Americans. We have, many of us have uh, become a culture to the culture here. And we also have built our own uh, culture, our own restaurants, uh, uh, our own uh, church, and so forth, which is a very good, a very good amalgamation of both cultures. Teaches, empowers, and strengthens, and that's the key. You don't have to agree, but if you listen to me, I guarantee you'll learn something new. Professor Hans Berry, the other members of the of the academic community, the president, Mordecai Johnson, Johnston, all the professors who are here, the scholars, they raised the danger to the world, not just Ethiopia. Today it's Ethiopia. And sure enough, after the fascist invasion of Italy, Europe was thrown into, into the Second World War conflagration. And I want to show them that it's okay to, to dance for your country and continue to, your culture. So I've been traveling for the past six years through different countries from Europe to Canada to the western part of the United States to the throughout the eastern part of the United States as an American to show them that we have to stay in power for this country. Because without them, I know me, I wouldn't be here today. Go to any part of Africa where the people have not been tainted by the definition and they will all offer you water and rest and shelter and they will offer you kindness, which is the benchmark of their existence. You know that people believe in God, not because of what they say, but because of what they do. As elders in our communities, as youngins come along, we have the responsibility of recording our story in our words, in our time, in our rhythms, and learning to unlearn all the trash that we've been taught. Trash, negative images, trash, negative images, trash, negative images. Perhaps maybe if we think of someone like Bob Marley and his song, War. We might really love that song, but the question is, have we really listened to the lyrics of that song? I'm going to say a few lyrics. I've cut it short <laughs> for timing purposes. But um, some of the lyrics to War reads, And until the ignoble and unhappy regimes that hold our brothers in Angola, in Mozambique, South Africa, subhuman bondage have been toppled, utterly destroyed, Everywhere is war. Me say war. The emperor's personal diplomacy then, his one-on-one -on -one meetings with American presidents, was shaped, shaped by his desire to maintain a strong military, to repulse invaders from outside of Ethiopia, and to maintain security within the country. So during almost all of his six state visits, that was the hidden agenda, not, not too good.